we have one final video boys before tommy says goodbye the second most viewed video on his channel the vanishing of flight 370 is this this malign one or is this uh, lost this is the malign airplane probably right that's why you get taxed Dude, to me, one of the scariest things in the world is to fucking crash an airplane. You guys ever sit in an airplane and imagine what happens? What will happen if it happens now, man? That is all. I think about this very often, man. One of the scariest things in the world. Imagine you're in an airplane and you know this is it, man. This plane is fucking crashing and you're fucked. The fucking thoughts that go through your mind, the panic in the room, the SMSs you're sending out. That shit must be horrifying. I, I very often, you guys remember some years ago, there was a German pilot who was flying from Barcelona to Berlin. And he was suicidal. And he was locking out his co-pilot and he was crashing into the mountains uh, in like northeast Spain. And everybody died. You guys remember that? I think about this often. Like how must that feel? You sit in an airplane and they tell you, yeah, this is it. This guy is going to crash. We have 10 minutes left to live. That is so horrifying, dude. That shit is scaring the living hell out of me. When I'm in a car, at least I still have control, you know? But that shit is so horrifying. Like, your final moments, and it's, it's just... This is it, man. Wow. Scary as hell, dude. Imagine, dude, I know this is very uh, horrifying things I'm saying here. Imagine you are in a 9-11 plane. How fucking horrifying that must be. You sit in that plane, these terrorists, if you stand up, they're gonna shoot you, and you know you're flying into your probable death. That is so horrifying, dude. If you drown like one minute, you're dead, man. But fucking sitting in that airplane just... Oh, horrifying, horrifying, horrifying. Well, like, like I, I always think about this. I imagine this stuff. Imagine you're Kobe Bryant. You, you're in with your young daughter. You sit in this helicopter and it's like, nah, 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 and you're going down. What are your last thoughts? That must be so fucked, man. Oh, I, I wish... I wish that you and me never have to feel that. I hope no one in chat has to ever feel that shit. Bah! Most horrifying shit I could imagine. At Kuala Lumpur International Airport, a Boeing 777 is preparing. What? My grandfather had a saying for not flying an airplane. Today might not be your day to die, but if it is the pilot's day to die, then everyone dies. <laughs> <Departure>. <laughs> Malaysian Airlines. That mouse was once a couple of seconds away from an airplane crash. Uh, the guy who made Family Guy, uh, Seth, Seth, Seth McFarlane, he was in a 911 plane and then he left it because he was to he came to late or something. Dude, imagine that. That is unimaginable. You just missed your plane. It was in the end the 911 plane. Uh, that happened to Seth uh, McFarlane. True story, man. Blah. Flight 370 so is a daily passenger flight between Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia and Beijing, China. 370, He got notification from his Illuminati membership. Yeah, sometimes in life, right? Like the guy who owned the World Trade Center, that guy who was buying the World Trade Center one year earlier, uh, he was actually on 9-11, on he was actually supposed to be in his office. But then he had a doctor's appointment, which he always, always skipped. But that day, he went to his fucking gastroenterologist, man. He got a call. He left the World Trade Center, the guy who owns it and insured it one year earlier. Crazy, man. Crazy. Crazy how that happened. 42 minutes past midnight, Flight 370 is given clearance to depart. On board are Captain Zahari Ahmad Shah, First Officer Fariq Abdul Hamid, 10 cabin crew members, and 227 passengers. Number control, Malaysian uh, 370. Malaysian 370, number radar, good morning. Climb flight level 250. Good morning, level 250, Malaysian uh, 370. Malaysian 370, climb flight level 350. Climb level 350, Malaysian uh, 370. Less than an hour into the flight, the plane is cruising over the, the South China Fiction? Sea what at plan? an altitude of 35. I actually kind of forgot the story. Well, they crashed and they never found anything. So I would guess they crashed and the currents put all the evidence away. I would get guess. Well, they're not flying over Iran, so they didn't get shut down. Five thousand feet. The night sky is clear. China and the it? weather is calm. Flight 370 is then instructed to signal air traffic control in Ho Chi Minh, Vietnam, as it is about to enter Vietnamese airspace. The flight controller in Kuala Lumpur says goodnight, with no sign that anything should be amiss. 
Malaysian 370. Malaysian 870, maintaining level 350. Malaysian 370. Malaysian 370, country Ho Chi Minh 120, decimal 9. Good night. Good night, Malaysian 370. This is the highest volume, man. Come on, put up the volume in your... One minute and 43 seconds later, the aircraft suddenly vanish from radar screens at Kuala Lumpur, Ho Chi Minh, and well, Bangkok. that must be a crash. This form of positional tracking depends on a signal being emitted by one of two transponders aboard a plane, and so its disappearance would suggest both transponders ceased to function, or the system was manually deactivated by someone on board. All subsequent attempts to contact and ascertain the whereabouts of Flight 370 are unsuccessful. The aircraft has seemingly vanished without the trace. After missing its scheduled time of- Did they ever- I'm going conspiracy here. Did they ever check the, the, the list of passengers and if someone was like really important there? Arrival in Beijing some oh, four hours later, Flight 370 is officially declared missing. And in the Just wake of watching. that announcement, Thank you, Ging the most Ging expensive search effort in aviation history is about to commence. Very interesting. 14 already. Time flies, Pog. The search was initially concentrated around the location of the flight's disappearance between the South China Sea and the Gulf of Thailand. The search area was soon expanded, however, after the Malaysian military disclosed additional information. Unlike the radar system employed by air traffic control, long-range military radar does not rely on transponders but use reflectance to track the position of aerial targets. They can see your aircraft A review so of the data collected by the Malaysian military revealed that moments of the contact with Flight 370 was lost. The aircraft had deviated from its scheduled flight path with a subtle turn to the right, followed by a prolonged turn to the left. The aircraft had then flown back towards and across the Malaysian Peninsula before turning right near Wait, the Wait, this is confirmed. It, it didn't crash, it was still flying. Holy, that is... What the fuck? What the fuck? ...island of Penang. It maintained this northwesterly heading until it escaped the radar's coverage. Over the next few days, that is the Strait of Malacca, the Andaman Sea, and the Bay of Bengal was scoured by a multinational... But doesn't that... I, I want to act like I'm an inv investigator. Doesn't that already show human behavior? Someone turned the transponders off and then changed the route? So you see that human behavior has has been part of this and not like a crash or something. Of Nothing natural. Vessels, but there was no trace so you don't need to fucking search for it, you know? They obviously Meanwhile, did something. investigators began to analyze the aircraft's satellite communication records. Like all modern airliners, Flight 370 was equipped with a satellite communications terminal, or SATCOM, to send and receive transmissions. Like sometimes I have this weird theory. I might be going too far here. Maybe I'm just an idiot, man. But look, if the po most powerful organizations in the world want to do something, they fucking do it, man. Dude, they killed a president. They killed JFK, man. If the most powerful... I know I sound like a weirdo here, but come on, you got to fucking think about this. If they want to make you vanish, if they want to kill you in your fucking own cell, because your name is Jeffrey Epstein, dude, they will fucking do it, man. Holy fuck, Tommy, come on, man. Come on. Don't fucking be... If, if the real powerful want to get something done, they get it fucking done, dude. To and it's not conspiracy bullshit, man. It's... Prior to the departure, on, the SATCOM terminal had logged onto the satellite network and established a connection with a ground station in Perth, Australia. What? That station then maintained a detailed record of all the incoming and outgoing traffic between it and Flight 370. This is what it contained. Prior Look, to the flight's was disappearance saw, of the South they, they China saw what Sea, happened. How everything many people appeared to be working as intended. Without anyone knowing. Then, at some point during this portion of the flight, the SATCOM link was severed. For whatever reason, the terminal ceased to respond. But three minutes after the flight vanished over the Andaman Sea, the terminal requested to log back onto the network. The SATCOM link was successfully re-established and was not disrupted again until nearly six hours later when the flight is presumed to have crashed due to fuel exhaustion. Yes, yeah, someone During will have probably final... done the mathematics on their fuel, right? And at what point the fuel will be out. But why would the human decide to go somewhere else knowing he's running out of fuel anyway? At the moment, I'm just acting like I'm an investigator. I would think maybe one of the pilots was suicidal and wanted to do some dumb shit, maybe? And he... Back then, right, you could still put... 
you could make a... Um, that no one can get into the cockpit. Hours. Two you know? attempts were made to contact the plane via satellite telephone. Both calls were acknowledged by the SATCOM terminal and would have been routed to the cockpit. Right, co-pilots like the guy in Spain. The co-pilot was going for P, and the other guy locked the door. Since 9-11, they can lock the doors. And you can just... And no one can come in anymore. That's what happened with the Spain guy. Yet, they went unanswered. The terminal had also responded to five automatic status requests. In short, if the ground station had not heard from the aircraft in over an hour, it would transmit a signal to confirm the terminal was still online. While these transmissions did not contain any information about the flight's position, investigators you, were Nye. able to measure the stream, distance okay? between the shit. Hey guys, I'm making a little break just to say that Bill Nye can suck it. There you go. That light Man, I'm toxic lately. I kind of like it though. The aircraft at the time of each it's transmission, funny. based on how long it took those transmissions to be sent and received. This generated seven rings of possible locations from which seven of these transmissions are thought to have originated. No. By taking fuel consumption, speed, and other factors into account, flight path analysis indicated the most probable origin of the final transmission to be somewhere along this arc in the southern Indian Ocean. Why would he be there then? The search most effort shifted though. accordingly, and as the region fell within the jurisdiction of Australia, the Australian like, yeah, government took then. charge Big of fan. the operation. Over the next few weeks, the search area was progressively refined to account for oceanic drift as well as improved estimations of the flight path. But this part of the southern Indian Ocean is so that remote, you just it fly took all around six the world and you're like, what the fuck is happening, there. man? A new fleet of aircraft and vessels gradually covered more than 4.5 million square kilometers oh, of lovely. ocean. But Flight 370 was nowhere to be found. Henry Clinton? If the impact with the ocean had I always been feel like with stories like this that that the solution is mostly more simple than you think like human beings tend to really create drama like oh something it was probably CIA but in the end it was just something basic forceful it was possible the resulting sound had been recorded by underwater listening devices known as hydrophones this possibility was investigated and four hydroacoustic monitoring stations had recorded something That is so fucking scary, man. That's some fucking chlorophyll shit. Holy moly, man. Is that a plane crashing to the water, man? Oh my, that is so scary, dude. While the timing and direction of the sound were reasonably consistent with the final satellite transmission, the estimated origin was not. The sound was in all likelihood caused by nothing more than geological activity. Flight 370 was also equipped with two underwater locator beacons which had a battery life of some 40 days. And as the deadline approached in early April, signals would have- But doesn't- As a kid, I always learned every plane has a black box. And the black box can always be- Well, you have to physically find it probably, right? It, it doesn't like send out a signal or something. Pulse and frequency somewhat similar to the signal emitted by the beacons were detected at depths of up to 3,000 meters. An Thank autonomous you, submersible then spent weeks scanning the seafloor where the signals had been detected, but no wreckage was ever found. And nothing would be found until more than 16 months later when a discovery was made on the opposite side of the Indian Ocean. On the 29th of July 2015, a group of people were cleaning up a beach in Reunion, a small island to the east of Madagascar, when they stumbled upon this two meter long metallic object covered in barnacles. Aviation experts quickly identify the object as a section of an aircraft wing known as a flaperon. Upon closer inspection, internal markings was... including dates and serial numbers conclusively ascertained the flap- well, they just crashed. I mean, how was this crazy? They fucking crashed and unfortunately we didn't find them. belonged to Fly 370. Isn't that proof of crash? Even though Reunion Island is some 4,000 kilometers west of the search area, and more than a year had gone by since the flight disappeared, the location was consistent with simulations of debris dispersal patterns. Dude, there's debris there was now uh, tangible evidence that This is kind of how plastic uh, moves in the ocean. No, no shit, man. Flight 370 had <laughs> crashed somewhere in the Indian Ocean. The discovery of the flaperon prompted numerous searches along beaches and shorelines of southeastern Africa, and at least 31 additional items of interest have well, since been covered the story. What the and fuck is big deal? Some of these items include a section of the outboard flap from the right wing, 
a piece of cowl. The question is though, why would he engines. still uh, change his um, a partial route. door why would from the, pilot the nose just landing? Just go somewhere gear? else. Why would you do that? A section of the vertical stabilizer. The question is why? I would think it was suicidal. I and guess. The mangled casing from one of the embedded headrest monitors. Eighteen of these items were identified as either likely, highly likely, or almost certain to have originated from Flight 370, whereas only three could be confirmed. The remaining eleven could not be identified. There were no traces of an explosion found on any of the debris tested, nor was there any... Why will the terrorists get an airplane Kuala Lumpur, man? They want to hit white people in America. The evidence man. for fire, except for I mean, three small burn marks on one of the unidentifiable items. The search for debris was further aided by Earth observation satellites. Analyses of satellite imagery from March of 2014 uncovered a number of images which appear to feature man-made objects floating on or just below the Dude, it's kind of crazy what they can all find, man. surface wow. in the southern Indian Ocean. Holy moly. However, the images were not nearly sharp enough to resolve any identifiable well, snakes markings, on a plane? and multiple searches notwithstanding, this debris was never recovered. A satellite image taken mere hours after the final transmission also captured what appeared to be a contrail some distance away crazy from what they the can search see, area. Man? A later analysis, however, concluded it was most check. likely a shadow from a somewhat linear cloud formation. The underwater portion of the search continued for months trace. and eventually years before it was finally suspended in early 2017. By which point some... I, I don't know if I'm wrong, but some weeks ago I was opening my news, my German news, and they found... There was something about this, I just didn't 120, care. 120,000 like square kilometers of seabed had been scrutinized. The search effort was then resumed by an American salvage Isn't company like known the best as technology ever, man? Everything you can but do after more than a year of searching, so they too came up empty-handed. Unless the final resting place of Flight 370 can be located, it may be impossible to determine exactly why it crashed. Nevertheless, there have been no shortage of theories. Thank you, uh, effect. On the day of the disappearance, two of the passengers raised suspicion as they had boarded the flight with stolen passports, which immediately prompted concerns of a hijacking. But investigators were unable to link the two men to any terrorist organizations and soon determined they had traveled under false identities because they were seeking asylum, not due to any nefarious intent. Yeah, Similar suspicions were raised on one of the passengers were identified as a flight engineer who might have possessed the necessary expertise to take control of a Boeing 777. Apart from the 239 persons on board, Flight 370 carried nearly 11 metric tons of cargo. Among the items listed on the flight manifest was a shipment of lithium-ion batteries, which led some to suspect a fire might have broken out mid-flight. And then he tried For to instance, get back, the maybe? crash of UPS Airlines Flight 6 in September of 2010 was the result. But, but if you get fire in the back and this all burns, you still have enough time to send out signals, right? Of a fire that was ignited by a pallet of lithium-ion batteries. Another potential source of ignition would be an electrical malfunction. The crash of Swiss Air Flight 111 in September of 1998 is thought to have been caused by a fire within the electrical wiring above the cockpit. The fire damaged and disabled multiple avionic systems, including the transponders and SATCOM. In the case of Flight 370, the sudden loss of communication and subsequent deviation from its scheduled flight path might have been a direct response to a fire. Yeah. The two pilots may have turned back towards Malaysia to attempt an emergency landing no at the nearest suitable airport. But no such attempt was ever made. Instead, Flight 370 kept going and remained aloft for another six that is, hours. It's getting really interesting. Holy Some have theorized man, the crew might have been incapacitated by a sudden or gradual loss of cabin pressure. Uh. For instance, when Helios Airways Flight 522 failed to pressurize in August of 2005. How many fucking crashes is there? I never want to fly again. Fuck this shit. The pilots quickly fell unconscious. Yet the aircraft continued to fly on oh, autopilot so scary. for more than two ah, hours money. until it ran out of fuel. Oh. Airline pilots are of course trained for such an event. In the event of cabin depressurization, an automatic system is designed to deploy oxygen masks to give the pilots enough time to perform an emergency descent to a more breathable Planes are built altitude. On the nah, uh, no, 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 come on, that, we're, we're, that is wrong. Planes are by far statistically the most safe form of travel, by far, by far. That, that is clear. The data recorded by the Malaysian military radar does indeed contain altitude information, but it is highly inconsistent. 
In fact, the Boeing 777 is in case... The annual risk of being killed in a plane crash for the average American is about 1 in 11 million. On that basis, the risk looks pretty small. Compare that, for example, to the annual risk of being killed in a motor vehicle air crash, which is 1 in 5,000. Yeah. Yeah. I think what makes people so scared or what... Um, what gives this horrifying idea to a plane crash that have, have no control when you are in a car you have control I, you can go away and stuff you know and in an airplane you have no control if something happens you're fucked you're just gonna sit there which is why and here i'm a big german boomer i truly believe that for me tommy k driving a car is safer than flying a plane because i'm such a good driver <laughs> fucking german boomer i'm such a good driver that i will never die like i'm always driving slow i always look at everything i always expect that everybody is retarded man yes yes i truly believe performing that performing the extreme altitude fluctuations recorded at one point the aircraft exceeded its maximum operating altitude by more than 15,000 feet before making a 50,000 feet nose dive in less than a minute. Holy Attempts to recreate these maneuvers on a flight simulator were unsuccessful, and thus the data was deemed inaccurate and unreliable. Yeah, if Flight 370 did lose cabin pressure... True, Ryan, it's true. Everyone in chat who will ever fucking drive a car, 90% of being a driver is expecting others to be retards. It's totally, it's the truth of life. The truth of life, man. You will be the best driver ever if you always just like I, when I'm on the highway, I always stay there for everybody. Nobody get close to me. Nobody touch me. I don't trust any of you. You guys are all idiots. That's how you stay safe. It's the fucking truth. Every driver on chat knows 35, that. 35,000 feet. Stay away from everyone and you're safe. And the pilots were incapacitated safe. before descending to a more oxygenated altitude. It might explain why the aircraft remained aloft for as long as it did. What is a bit more difficult to explain, however, are these alterations in heading. Flight simulations have established the aircraft must have been under manual control during the initial left turn as the bank angle or inclination of that turn was beyond the limits of the autopilot. Subsequent turns, however, could have been either manual or automatic. But for the autopilot to have made these course corrections, someone with the requisite knowledge must have programmed it to do so. The only other alternative is that the aircraft was in fact under manual control. That's actually really interesting, right? You, it's like a movie, you want to know what happened. In late June of 2014, several news outlets reported that the special yes, investigation if I was the had identified I would the captain onto the of Flight 370 get... as a prime suspect. Anything about a his childhood the captain's psychology. home and uncovered a flight simulator which supposedly contained a suspicious route which ended in the southern Indian Ocean. At the time, there was no official acknowledgement that such a route had been recovered, and a lengthy public report issued by the Malaysian government in 2015 made no mention of such a discovery. Then, in 2016, confidential documents pertaining to a forensic examination conducted by the Royal Malaysia Police in May of 2014 was leaked to the media. Leaked These nowadays, documents man. made it clear that such a route had not only been recovered, but thoroughly examined. Soon thereafter, the Malaysian government confirmed the existence of this simulated flight path, and this is what it looks like. It should come as no surprise that many regard this as damning evidence of premeditation. But according to investigators, it is not quite so evident. The data recovered consists of seven coordinates. Two in Kuala Lumpur, two in the Strait of Malacca, one in the Bay of Bengal, and two in the southern Indian Ocean. The data was reconstructed from a file that had been automatically generated and saved by the simulation software a month before the incident. However, it's not clear whether the coordinates originate from the same flight session. In other words, it might not be correct to simply trace a continuous line between the seven coordinates soon, Lisa, eh? <laughs> as they could be from separate sessions. The forensic examination by the Royal Malaysia Police simply concluded no I actually quite like flying. Sorry if I always pause, but it's reaction. Because when I fly, I like to, I love to look out of the window. I think it's almost a privilege to look out of the window of an airplane. You see so much stuff, man. It was so cool when we arrived in the UK and I, I see the UK and the cliffs and the, and the ocean. I think it's so beautiful, man. One of my greatest experiences ever as a human was flying to China. I saw Mongolia and the mountains and I saw people living in the mountains. It was so cool, man. 
so fuck conclusively indicate any kind of premeditated act pertaining but, to. When I was flying to China, I almost died. I remember uh, seven hours in, we were over Mongolia and there was a storm or something. And dude, I, I'm really a hot guy, right? I'm I'm I, I'm in my chair like four years ago. I'm flying to China uh, from Berlin to Beijing, like with the jet stream, a little bit with over Mongolia, and suddenly like, and you're like, okay, there's turbulences, right? And everybody, it's like night, everybody's sleeping and it's quiet. And next to me is like this woman and like more, more and, I'm, and suddenly like, and then dude, there was, there was really like for five minutes, for five minutes, that was normal, man. It was really, dude, for five minutes, I thought, oh, hey, 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 hey. I swear it's not a fake story. And Rosie, why won't you say that you cunt? You fucking bitch, man. I'm really, I'm using bad words today. I'm sorry. I'm really a bit toxic. Because I hate people like a Rosie's, okay? Uh, and man, there was there was these five minutes where I felt, oh, so this is how it feels like when you die in an airplane. And it just felt like you're just shocked. You can't, you're just like, um, uh, like it's not like you're crying or screaming. You're just like, oh man, that was really, oh my God, that was so scary, man. The Let's get the shit on me. Even so, the similarities between the simulated route and the Thank pursued you, route of Life 370 directly influenced the search operation. Imagine I would make that up. There probably is really streamer that makes stories like this up. That is quite sad, actually, making that shit up, dude. I mean, why would I just randomly make that up that I got into turbulences over fucking Mongolia, man? Australian investigators considered the possibility of someone deliberately extending the range of the flight by gliding the aircraft off the fuel exhaustion. If so, the plane could have traveled an additional 200 kilometers. Hmm. Alternatively, the range could have been reduced by a controlled ditching prior to fuel exhaustion. While ultimately deemed unlikely, these two scenarios did affect the search effort. Control ditch? Why would you do a control ditch, if man? If the captain the steered die. Flight 370 Lisa, up... Lisa, we should watch that movie with Tom Hanks where he's landing the plane in New York. ...course with intention of crashing in a remote captain part of the shit. southern Indian Ocean, his motive is an even greater mystery. Sahari Ahmad Shah was 53 and married with three children. He had more than 18,000 hours of flight experience and a spotless track record. Mm. Investigators found no evidence of financial issues and his monthly expenses before the disappearance indicated nothing unusual. He had no history of mental illness, nor had he displayed any recent changes in lifestyle or behavior. He was raised on the island of Penang, which has led some to speculate the flight's second turn to the southwest of Penang was the captain getting a final view of his hometown. Yeah, like I'm still with the suicide thing. I am still with the suicide thing right now. Some be believe a hijacking could have been politically motivated as Sahari was an avid supporter of a democratic opposition leader who was sentenced to five years in prison mere hours before Flight 370 took off. Others point to unconfirmed reports of marital issues, but this is contradicted by the official investigation and disputed by family members. But you never know who wants a suicide, man. The look at the world, man. You guys all look like, wait, what? Robert Williams killed himself? Dude, you never know who's depressed and wants to kill himself, dude. You never fucking know, dude. The only real inconsistency noted by the final report is that the captain failed to repeat the assigned radio frequency during the last verbal communication. Malaysian 370, country coach, mean 120, decimal it would have been standard procedure to repeat the assigned frequency as the captain had correctly done a few minutes prior. Whether this omission is indicative of anything but a mistake is anyone's best guess. By all accounts, Cap how should you have to be to kill families in order to take your own life? It was a big thing in Germany three years ago when that German pilot crashed in Barcelona, in Spain, and killed a lot of Germans. Uh, he was suicidal and he killed uh, hundreds of people with him. Yeah. The thing is, though, I, I knew a guy that was um, oh man, another fake story. Back in the day, me and my friend would go to a bar in Halle called Chesh, and there was a barkeeper. I forgot his name though. And one day I turned on the TV and he was at Stern TV. He was on the TV because he was uh, the boyfriend of one of the girls dying in that airplane. And I remember that. Uh, and he will just say, dude, you know, we can all sit here and think why he did that, but it doesn't bring these people back. Like the people that are actually affected and actually lost someone, they actually, um, they actually realize that it doesn't matter why he did it, you know? The people are dead anyway. But yeah, very sad stuff, very sad stuff. I mean, they, they changed the laws now, right? You can't be alone in the cockpit anymore. That's forbidden now. The Sahari. But 
True, man. Uh, you know, you can say, what an asshole. He just killed all these people. What an asshole. But on, on the other hand, who cares, you know? He's dead. They're all dead. Your opinion, my opinion doesn't matter. You know, that's that's the finality on sadness of death. It doesn't matter what your opinion is. They're dead anyway. He was an affable and well-respected pilot who was passionate about aviation, as evident by the photos and videos he shared on social media. Hi, everyone. Uh... This is a YouTube video that I've made um, as a community uh, service after learning... The co-pilot was found to be even less conspicuous. Farik Abdul Hamid was only 27 and due to marry a fellow pilot. He had nearly 3,000 hours of flight experience, although... The question I would ask right now, was it possible for the main pilot to cut off access to this guy? Like it was in Spain with the German guy. Was there a possibility in this airplane, which I think there is, to cut him out? Oh, only 39 hours in this time. But of imagine you sit in an airplane for six hours and people are screaming behind you and you're just like, oh, I'm gonna aircraft. Put this Much like Zahari, I think Farid, the Boeing no uh, has that back mental in the day. or interpersonal issues of note, nor was there any the evidence of conflict between lock. the two of them. Some questioned the plausibility of a pilot instigated hijacking due to the apparent lack of interference by the other pilot. Well, when Ethiopian Airlines Flight 702 was hijacked by the co-pilot in February of 2014, he did so by merely waiting for the captain to take a bathroom break before locking the cockpit That's door behind That's what I've been saying the whole him. time, man. That's the what I would think. The co-pilot was then free to divert the Italy-bound flight to Switzerland to seek asylum. The only noteworthy piece of evidence in regards to the co-pilot of Flight 370 is his phone. You see, when the... On the day when the guy crashed in Spain, my mother flew from Malta to Germany at the exact same time he crashed and I did not know if my mother just died. Oh man, dude. I don't think you're making that up and that is, oh, dude. It's like when, dude, I, I know that feeling a bit, another fake story. When when the attacks in Halle happened, the guy at the synagogue, my one of my best friends, Frank, my, literally the, my, the lawyer to my stream, he lived literally right around the corner where the guy shot the woman and he walks there every day to the fucking tram. And I was like, dude, man, are you okay, man? Fucking hell. That shit is fuck. You don't wish that to anyone. The confidential documents were leaked. They also confirmed another long circulated rumor. Namely that a cell phone tower had briefly established a connection with an iPhone 5S belonging to the co-pilot as Flight 370 approached the island of Penang. According to investigators, it was not a phone call as has been widely reported by the media, but merely an automatic location signal. Why this information was omitted from public reports, we may never know. So what is one to make of all of this? When that happened, when that attack happened, I just imagined, dude, I'm really not an emotional guy, but stuff like this, I always imagined, because I want to be honest, I saw the video. I saw the video where the guy is shooting the woman in, in Halle, you know? I, I saw it, I saw it. Uh, why? That's not a question. And I thought that was so sad, man. And I, I imagined my mom walking past there. I imagined my mom just walking to work and some random dude just shot, shoots her, man. Like, he, that's unimaginable. Unimaginable. That shit is unimaginable for the human brain, man. And now this little cunt sits in prison, man. And he's doing these Nazi manifestos, man. Ho, 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 ho. I'm so cool. That little bitch, man. Sometimes, man, I, you know, you should go to prison to get into a cell and fuck this On guy the up, one man. hand, the simulated flight Something path good, seems suspicious. On the other, it is difficult to cast any substantial doubt on either of the two pilots' character. It is equally difficult to deny a hijacking is consistent with the available evidence. Then again, we're missing some quite major There's and no literal pieces no. of evidence. Obviously. The final report issued by the Malaysian government in 2018 could not attribute the loss of communication nor diversion of Flight 370 to a malfunction. Instead, it is believed that someone manually manipulated the aircraft and its systems. For instance, investigators believe SATCOM was manually disabled by a sudden and prolonged interruption of power. Then, once power was restored, the terminal simply rebooted. Likewise, the alterations in heading are believed to be the result of manual inputs. With that being said, the uncertainty... A lot of people chat on now scary, uh, sharing stories where some attacks happened and friends of them were close. Um, I was watching the German news some days ago about the guy in, 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 in Norway that shot people with a bow. And she said something which is just, just right. Asmgold said that too. I got it from him too. It seems we just live in a world now where this is normal. 
you have to walk out of your apartment knowing that there's a small chance, like a plane crash or getting hit by thunder, that some fucker is going to shoot you with arrows or a terrorist attack. It's just normal now. It is normal. It's sad, but it is reality. And I might sound crazy, man, but when I'm in the outside, I fucking look around, man. I, this might be sounding crazy, but when I'm at TwitchCon or ParadoxCon, I fucking look around, man. I look at people that look weird and stuff. You know, I don't want to fucking do racial profiling or something, but I, I always... Look at my surroundings and what seems weird and, you know, just in case. Might be crazy, but this is the world we live in now, dude. Situational awareness, yeah. If these findings are repeatedly emphasized due to the limited evidence available, and the report declining? does never explicitly right. state the flight was hijacked. In fact, no real conclusion is reached. Both the Malaysian and Australian government agree that Flight 370 crashed in the southern Indian Ocean, but that the cause is indeterminable without the wreckage, the location of which has managed to elude some of the foremost aviation experts in the world, as well as an impressive arsenal of cutting-edge technology for more than half a decade. I don't know, man. I, I, I think this is because of the media. I, you just hear about this more often, but it's not happening more often. Is that true? I don't know statistics, but like in Germany, we have more text than ever. I think statistics show that. I think so. Like 20 years ago, they didn't go around killing this politicians reminds me and of trying all the to get the times we had bombings shit, in you know? England or the stabbings or and shootings that happen less... on the road I live on monthly and how I wonder how my grandmother is doing when she is walking alone at night doing her care job. Uh, thank you, Van Pebbleman. Yeah, a lot of people have stories about this. It's crazy, man. And it's quite sad. And I, I sometimes get very angry at this. Like, what kind of world do we live in, man? Most people on this planet are still fucking good, you know? Most of you viewers, dude, I have 2k viewers, there's a chance that one of you guys is actually serial killer. But the West, we're all normal people, man. And I sometimes get angry at the stuff that, that we live in a world like this. And I sometimes wish, you know, you have this inner anger and you just wish that maybe the good, the good people will stand up a bit more and fight this shit, you know, and do something about it. Like, I, you know, like there's so much injustice and I feel like we could do more about it, man. Be a bit more harsh against it, you know? This this dumb shit, man. Authors, aviation experts, and independent investigators have all chimed in. Like, it, 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 and here we go, I'm gonna sound like an old man now. It can't be that Anders Breivik, the New Zealand shooter, and the Halle shooter are sitting in prison right now having fun, man. They can, they can write letters, they can influence people, they can... Uh, the German shooter just had a little relationship with a government uh, woman who is now a suspended man. Uh, Mr. Breivik has a PlayStation 4. Like, I don't know, I, I always believe in ethics and constitution and freedom, but people like this man, they they need to get fucked a little bit more, man. They, he can't fucking have a PlayStation, man. He he was literally suing for a PlayStation 4, and he won the case because of human rights, whatever. But uh, my god, come on, man. Have you ever seen Anders Breivik cells, man? Anders Breivik cells. This guy killed, how many people? How many people did he kill? How many people did he kill? Dude, dude, this is a better room than I used to own in my own street. This is better than my old streaming room. This is better than my own streaming room in Halle back then. He killed 70 people and he looks like this and he has a PlayStation right here. Uh, you can Google that. He uh, sued for it. And I sometimes feel like, man, a little bit more fucking justice, man. A little bit more, you know, still ethical and shit. Don't just fucking, yo, they still have rights. But man, Ava, what are we doing here, man? And to offer are just their laughing, own thoughts man. and theories as to the nature of the crash and the <sighs> location of the wreckage. Some believe there was no crash, but that the aircraft was shot down by an American naval base in the middle of the Indian Ocean. The satellite transmissions were then supposedly forged as part of a massive cover-up. Others Americans? believe the aircraft turned right towards India and traveled as far north as Kazakhstan, completely undetected. Debris was then supposedly planted along shorelines of southeastern Africa as part of a massive cover. rehabilitation bigger than punishment i have the opinion and i know i sound like a weird old german here some people look i studied law and i love constitution and democracy and everybody should have a second chance but i believe that some people inside a human society have given their full rights to be part of human society when you do certain things like killing 70 people you lost your right to be part of society and you lost your right for rehabilitation man you know, when you're fucking 16 and you have a shitty childhood and you killed someone for drug deals, okay, maybe we can talk about rehabilitation one day, but killing 70 people, the fucking New Zealand guy shooting all of these people, man, I feel like 
there should be a law of no rebuild like a no rehabilitation status and just you know no Another no death theory penalty, but suggests gone, the aircraft man. was remote gone and no playstation and controlled you know? by someone on the ground while Boeing and other companies have experimented with technology that would allow for an aircraft to the be The problem remotely. is that what I'm saying here is very hard to connect to uh, constitutions and human rights charters and, and stuff no like that. No commercial you know? airliner is known to be outfitted with such a system. Blood for the blood god. Nonetheless, conspiratorial. I've always been a guy, man, that, that asked for more justice. I'm going to say something weird now, okay? Uh, this is going to get weird. I, uh, just bear with me. Lately, this is going to get weird. Lately, I'm listening to Warhammer 40k, okay? It's like a fantasy lore. A lot of people you don't know that, okay? And in this lore, there's a guy called the Emperor of Mankind. And he's like a god, okay? And what he does is, he looks at the human race for thousands of years, and he's like, man, you guys are all idiots, you're fucking trash. And he says, fuck this, I'm taking over. And he takes over, and he's like, fuck all this bullshit. I make the rules now. Justice, reason, and logic will now prevail. He did very wrong. I sometimes like the system, not of a dictator, but of more harsh justice and more harsh going against the idiots, man. I I, I don't know, man. Listen, guys, this is about Warhammer. Does it, you know what I mean? I'm not asking for a dictator to take care of. No, I'm not saying that, man. But I personally, Tommy K, I, I'm a guy. Look, I, li I, I like the police and shit, you know. I, I, I have no problems if there's a lot of cameras in the UK because... Uh, if you have good institutions that that look into the police, uh, these the executive, right? That looks, that that controls them, checks and balances. I have no problem with having an armed policemen in my city if they're being controlled with uh, with CCTV. You know, I have no problem. I don't know. Side the assumption that Flight 370 I'm a flew bit, uh, in a straight line like, I feel like, and at I don't a know. constant speed I know there's of many the issues coming with that. The that all this has to be always controlled and shit. Incorrect. In early 20... But man, you know, man, what the fuck is this world becoming, man? I can't even walk through my own capital, fucking Berlin, without being scared of uh, stepping into a syringe or getting fucking mugged or some shit. What, what, how is that normal? Why are we all just standing here and like, it's normal. It's normal that people get shot all the time now and stuff. Why Why do good people look away so much and act like this is normal? That That's that's kind of the point I want to make. I sometimes feel like the good, the, the normal people have to stand up a bit more and call this out a bit more against the Justice, Wait, thank you, Krios. But nobody does. We're all sedated. We all have our lives, our vacations, our phones. Nobody gives a fuck anymore. The 18. A French uh, team of independent investigators right, proposed an alternate flight path, whereby an attempted landing on Christmas Island led to a crash site much further north than the region works, identified by the official works investigation. In While a surface search of this area was conducted about a week after the disappearance. The underwater face never reached this far north. As of the making of this video, the search operation has been suspended, but there have been talks of potentially Very resuming video. the Holy search. Crap, man. For now, it seems the vanishing of Flight 370 will. Come to China, we have it like this here. The problem is you have to always find the middle ground, the centrist ground, right? We can't, you can't have an authoritarian dictatorship where nobody can do anything anymore. Sure.